Our justice system is gone. BLM's taken over. BLM rules. The black right wing of American politics is one of the most frankly weird and inexplicable phenomena in American politics. In a country torn apart by racial resentment and supremacy, divided into camps based on real material action, individualist solutions, and denial of the problem even exists, the black right wing serves as one of the more shocking aspects of our political environment, and one that is either ignored by white leftists and liberals or incapable of approaching political critiques of black people they disagree with without being racist or addressed in terrible ways that come off as racist. I think with a lot of the assumptions that go on within our society based on race, a lot of people don't know how to react to this block of black people who are more aligned with those who historically have not really served the interests of black people in this country. Among the most famous of these black conservatives are figures like Larry Elder, Candace Owens, and Christian Walker, and a whole rabbit hole of others. I'm mostly singling out these three because Candace Owens is the most well-known of these figures. Larry Elder was recently relevant before he got blown out of the water in an election, and Christian Walker is just inexplicable day one of pride month starbucks started hanging the rainbow flag it's july where are the american flags where are they you were uh, you know what man we'll talk to the manager at the drive through window oh uh, yes we will because you were all about visibility and inclusion during pride month well i feel included and visible under the american flag where's my flag where's my these figures serve a very specific purpose within the republican party and establishment because they aren't really super popular with black people. They mostly exist as a bastion for conservatives to use to say they aren't racist because they have these black figures on their side. Though they do also help to soften conservative messages to a minority among the black community and tug them right. One of the main ways they achieved these two goals is by playing their Trump card, Democrats are racist too, which as someone who has gone on record saying the Dems are neoliberal fascists, I absolutely agree with. The problem with that statement is that it's incomplete. For one, it's common consensus among the black community that all white people can exhibit some form of racism, whether it's more passive and annoying than harmful or outright genocidal. Hell, white anarchists can be super racist too, or just really awkward when talking about race. On top of that, the Democratic and Republican Party switched platforms back in like the 60s or whatever, so while one party is considered racist now and the other may not be seen as being as racist, it's not a sign that one ideology is more racist than the other because the party switched which platform and ideology they had based on race, which doesn't even get into the fact that both parties support capitalist power relations, which have facilitated and systematized racism since their conception, as well as both being imperialist and colonialist. On top of that, both bought into the whole war on crime, tough on crime rhetoric because the Democrats realized it was the only way they could win elections for a certain time period. The problem they are pointing out is real, but the solution, while absolutely being to break with the Democratic Party, is not to go for the right, it's to go for the left. To acknowledge how our current systems perpetuate racism unless abolished and replaced with systems of direct democracy and non-hierarchical community-level organizing. Providing communities with the resources and ability to directly control themselves while decriminalizing nonviolent drug charges, making mental health more easily available, and providing people with democratic workplaces that pay them thriving wages and give them more individual autonomy would help to deal with a lot of those systemic forms of racism, while the more social aspects that they point out will require patience and education, more opportunities for community involvement, and time. This relates to the other claim that they use, that black people are racist too, which, yeah, depending on how you're talking about race. When people talk about systemic racism, that is something that relates to and serves white supremacy, so black people aren't really necessarily capable of being racist in that sense, although they, like Larry Elder for example, can absolutely help to further white supremacy. But there is a second kind of racism that's not systemic but social. Anyone can participate in that. When you express racist ideas about Asian people or indigenous people and such, that makes you racist regardless of your race. But much like the last point, this isn't the own they think it is. Accepting that point is true does not necessarily mean the next step is to join the Republican Party. This video isn't even necessarily for me to go into the debunking the worst takes of black right wing figures because none of them say anything unique from what most Republican talking points already are. Debunking Candace Owens would lead to saying a lot of the same stuff that I'd say if I was debunking someone like Ben Shapiro. That ink's already been spilled by other people. For example, Candace promotes the Blexit Foundation, and here's her pinned tweet regarding that. None of these points are really supported. 
the all black lives being supported line is especially funny because the common slogan at BLM protests is all black lives matter, specifically in reference to LGBT black people and especially black trans people. While Candace Owens doesn't really seem to have the kindest view of trans people. Even their YouTube channel does not present any new arguments or information for black people to receive regarding racism or the black right wing's counter to BLM. Not even counting the fact that even the farthest right black people I've met in the streets are still pro BLM a lot of the time. They just have different and more exclusionary solutions. The Blexit Foundation, to my knowledge, doesn't even seem to share as much of the same fervor of figures like Candace Owens and Larry Elder. Also, it turns out Candace Owens stole the name Blexit for that org from another organization by the same name, founded by another black woman, that was created in response to the Philando Castile police murder as a decentralized effort to give black people more economic autonomy. And the org Candace has doesn't seem to really be doing much at all other than platforming black conservatives and doing rallies and making money and selling merch. At the end of the day, that's what these people are really doing, making money. Candace Owens used to be super anti-conservative even. She didn't flip until her anti-cyber harassment website got shot down by liberals for being a terrible idea, and then she got attention from conservatives. These people shouldn't be taken any more seriously than other conservatives. I think what's also worth noting here is something related to Lawrence Dennis, one of the first American fascists, and a secret black man who was able to pass somewhat for white to hide his identity. He made a lot of money doing that, but his allegiance to the American right wing and fascism was more likely a survival thing trying to avoid racism by appealing to the racists. If you can't beat them, join them. And I think that's what happened to a lot of people here. So regardless, remember when you see these figures promoting narratives on race that serve white power structures, criticizing the Democratic Party, or pushing the same racist and unempathetic policies that have damaged black people in the past and other right-wing behaviors, that they are the problem, not the solution. And the solution is not the Democratic Party either. I would never suggest that. It's building up community power, dual power, mutual aid and autonomy for black communities, as well as pushing for solutions to crime and poverty that don't inflict more violence on people, but instead hit the problem at its root. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you would like to support the channel, you can do that on Patreon. My Ko-fi page is down right now, unfortunately, but Patreon is still going strong at 100%. So please check that out if you're able to and give there and see what benefits i have there and if you're interested in that and in the meantime i have other stuff i have to work on and another probably hour or so long video that's going to be kicking my ass for the next few weeks so i'll see you guys whenever that's ready anon see out Where are the American flags?